Kimmer's clay. So the Kimmer's clay is approximately 157 to 152 million years duration. So that five million year period represents the Kimmerisian period. And here at Kimmeridge, if we set the scene, it's where North Morocco is now. That's where we would be if we were back in that time, is in the tropical sea. And see what a depth would be. They're still arguing over it, but 50 to 150 meters deep. But everything's deposited below what we call storm wave base. And here, so of course, Kimmeridge clay has been buried at great depth. And this has now been pushed up during, during the alpine orogeny. And so Kimmeridge clay is well known for its oil generation. And in the North Sea, the Kimmeridge clay crops out there and it's generated all our North Sea. But here at Kimmeridge, it's been buried at great depth, but certainly not enough to generate hydrocarbons. But what we've got is these compressed beds and they comprise of mudstones. So it's just a lithified clay. It's just a, with no sort of bedding plane whatsoever. And then we get these organic rich shales and then occasional limestones. So from a fossil collecting point of view, it does yield different sort of uh, conditions sort of fossils. So in the mudstones, more often than not, we don't get delicate soft part preservation. We get often massive bones uh, there. And nothing, I've never found anything really articulated in these, these massive mudstones. But as we start to come out of the massive mudstones into more organic rich shells, you get delicate soft part preservation more often than not. And in, the, in the, these shale ledges, more often than not, we find uh, things like fish, uh, squid, and all sorts of things like that. In the limestones, they're massive limestones and they're dolomitic, so most of them. So they don't really yield, they just yield impressions of sort of fossils but nothing much else. So we don't really look for fossil material in there. So in some of the mudstones higher up in the Kimmeridge clay, we get nodule beds. And one of them is sort of famous called the rotunda nodules. And in those claystone nodules, which is like lithified clay around those uh, fossils, mostly they contain just ammonites and they're preserved 3D. So everything we get in these shales and mudstones are all just compressed flat because as that compressive, as the sediment builds up, that compressive force squashes this material down and compresses, compresses everything in it. But in, those, in the nodule beds, that's not the case because that clay around that ammonite is lithified. In other words, hardened sufficiently before that compressive force can actually squash them down. So we get excellent preservation in those nodules. And one of the things that the Kimmeridge clay is famous for is actually precipitation of pyrite. And pyrite is a metalliferous mineral, which is actually an unstable metalliferous mineral. It's, um, it can break down in humid conditions. Now you think in the cliffs, it, it, it does degrade. And you often see in, in these shells, you'll see a, like an orange or a bright orange stain coming out of that, where that um, is oxidizing that pyrite. And everything we, we get in the Kimmeridge clay is composed, comprised mainly of pyrite in it, sort of, in the fossil. So in the bones, we get pyrite. In the ammonites, they're pyritic as well. And so we need, when we, when we find this stuff, we've got to keep this material really, really dry. And, and what we do at the museum here is try to keep it a humidity of at least 40%, which is really extremely dry. Now, as a fossil collector, you wouldn't introduce something straight out of the field into that dry environment. So what we try to do is condition it so we gradually dry these fossils out. And that's how we sort of preserve the material. Where do we find the Kimmeridge clay other than the Kimmeridge? Uh, well, it's subcrops. In other words, it's just below the sort of topsoil in Wiltshire, parts of Dorset, and it floors, as I say, uh, way up, goes to the east and under the North Sea. So if we collect say fossil material in a quarry <coughs> in, in Wiltshire. It's not been buried at such great depth. And so there are more clays there than, than shales, although we do occasionally get sort of shales there. And uh, they d it does differ, so it's more near shore. So the fossil material there, we get lots of fossil wood and more slightly high energy conditions in indicate the water's slightly shallower. And we get things in the, in the vertebrate uh, field, things like dinosaur remains. They're more common up in, in Wiltshire and Berkshire than, than they are in, in this uh, 
play or, or this horizon here. Bearing in mind, we're 80 miles offshore in a, like a shelf deposit, so it's slightly different, okay? So again, the Kimmeridge clay crops out all over the world. So it cro crops out in um, Switzerland, Portugal, Spain, Germany, uh, Russia. Russia's got some really good lower Kimmeridge clay horizon there with it collects some fantastic vertebrate remains. The Kimmeridge clay crops out even in India and Morrison formation in America is, is um, Kimmeridge in some of it in age, but it's terrestrial. So in other words, the sediments there is land derived. And um, so, so as I say, Kimmeridge is where we get the best suite of Kimmeridge and rocks exposed anywhere in the world. And so hence, therefore, geologists make their way down here to study these rocks in great detail. People do study the geology of the Kimmeridge clay to work out actually the ocean temperature, the air temperature and everything else. And I think probably about 15 years ago, they called the whole of the Kimmeridge clay in two horizons. One just above Kimmeridge Bay and one near Worth Matravers. Because the, um, when you core the Kim or when you drill it, you, you don't want to intercept any faults that throws out the geology. And from that, they were going to work out the ocean temperatures, everything else uh, from this. The study was a two million, two million pound project, I think. I've not seen many results, though, which is a bit of a problem. Um, but that's been done, and that would have told us a lot of questions that have not yet been answered.